OnePlus launched the much awaited and much hyped phone OnePlus 2 last year. Well, it was touted uh, as flagship killer smartphone of 2015 by the company. So I decided to use this smartphone for a few months before finally reviewing it. Hey what's up guys this is Shipra. So in this review I would be discussing the things which I noticed about this smartphone which will help you in deciding uh, whether it's worth buy or not and if it's a flagship killer or not. The OnePlus 2 comes in 16GB with 3GB RAM and 64GB with 4GB RAM memory variants and I have got 64GB sandstone black color variant to review. So before detailing about the phone, let's check out the box content first. The box is a rectangular, minimalistic, beautiful red color affair. Once you lift it up to open, you'll be greeted by the beautifully crafted OnePlus 2 in sandstone black color. Below the phone is home for literature package that consists of quick start guide and user guide. A white color 2 ampere USB wall adapter and a tangle free red color USB type C cable. Let's get back to the phone. The phone is beautifully crafted and you can say that about it even at the first look. The finishing at the edges, curves and corners is top class and clearly shows how much attention company has paid while building this phone. The front houses the 5.5 inch display. Up here we have 5 megapixel selfie camera, earpiece and LED notification light. And below the display, you will find two capacitive touch keys, the home key with built-in fingerprint sensor. Remember, it's just a touch key and not a button that you can press, like the one we find in the iPhones. And it has a screen card pre-installed on it, which is superb. The outer frame is crafted from a resilient alloy of aluminum. The left chassis just has an alert slider. You can switch between sound profiles without turning the screen on. That's a quick way to turn your phone silent, but I ended up pressing power button along with alert slider toggle key. Now that is irritating sometimes. Turning towards the right, it has volume rockers along with a power button, whereas the 3.5mm audio jack and secondary mic are located at the top, and the speaker grills and USB Type-C port can be found at the bottom. Moving to the back side of the phone, it comes with a removable sandstone black back, but you can swipe the back cover with different colors and style made available by the company and third party accessories maker. The 13 megapixel primary camera along with dual LED flash and IR laser focus are located here. And under the back cover, you will find the tray to insert two nano SIM cards. Now these two metal points let the system recognize this style swap and change the theme on H2OS but of no use if you have Oxygen OS on your OnePlus 2. Weighing at 175 grams, OnePlus 2 is definitely not a lightweight phone, but the device seems rock solid and durable. Security is a major concern according to me and while setting up a new phone, I always set up the security options first. So the OnePlus comes with a fingerprint sensor, let me show you how to set it up first. Go to the settings then fingerprint. It will ask you to add one, it will register all possible touch. And there we go. Your fingerprints have been saved and is all set to use to unlock the phone. I am impressed with fingerprint sensor. It is accurate and quick. Every time I used it merely took a second to open the device. OnePlus 2 comes with 5.5 inch IPS LCD 1080p display that has the pixel density of 401 ppi and is well protected by Corning Gorilla Glass 3. It has got 178 degree of crystal clear viewing angles, that is great. Full brightness is also excellent but not under sunlight. Colors and vibrancy also looked bit dull and muted. Though it outperformed many of the competitors when tested under sunlight, but again, struggles with color reproduction and sharpness. Well, it does have a quality full edge display, but not the best in the lot. Moving between apps, browsing, everything looks perfectly fine, all thanks to 64-bit Qualcomm Snapdragon 810 chipset. Paired with the Adreno 430 GPU and 4 GB RAM, graphic-intensive games and other demanding apps run smoothly, 
Also, you will not find yourself complaining about heating issues. However, the top half of the phone got little warm when I played games for a longer period but never got too hot. On the storage front, it has 64 GB of ROM with no option for expanding memory using any external source. Well, the configuration didn't leave any room for complaint here. Talking about software, it runs Oxygen OS forked over Android 5.1 Lollipop. Pretty neat and clean without any ugly skin and bloatware. Well, that looks pretty close to stock Android. It also has few customizations for themes and colors as turning dark mode on will enable a dark background. You can also choose accent colors and even customize LED notification color indicator to differentiate notifications based on the apps. The phone has on-screen gestures as well and it also offers the list of your most frequently used apps and a list of your frequent contacts as well. Well, regarding preloaded apps, I liked Audio Tuner, which can change sounds depending on your mode of use. You get default settings in here for games, movie, and music. You can also customize your music experience according to your preferences. Moving to the primary camera, it features a 13 megapixel sensor with dual LED flash, IR laser autofocus, and OIS. The laser autofocus allows the camera to focus automatically on any subject under viewfinder within 0.2 seconds. That's pretty fast. Also, OIS works pretty well and cancels out unwanted shakes. The camera app is quite neat without many extra features and is easy to use, I would say. You can shoot in three different modes, clear shot, HDR and beauty. Now swiping from left brings in an uh, option for time lapse, slow motion, photo, video up to 4K resolution, manual mode and panorama. Swiping from right lets you view the already taken images. Also you can adjust shots brightness by tapping long and hovering on screen. Regarding quality of images, it produced standard quality images with excellent details and colors. Laser autofocus captures focused area quickly and take out best from it. The best part of the camera is its low light capturing capabilities which I found crisp. The 5 megapixel front shooter produced reasonable good quality pictures even in the dotted light. You would enjoy taking selfies with the front camera. A massive 3300 mAh battery which is quite apt for a 5.5 inch full HD screen and keeps it powered throughout the day on heavy usage. That includes Facebook, WhatsApp, Instagram, Twitter, checking emails, browsing and gaming too. It took me 2 hours to charge it completely. That inevitably put a question mark on fast charging frames. There's no other battery saving mode apart from built-in battery saver mode. Pretty satisfied with the battery performance. It has twin speaker grill towards the bottom. Though it features only a mono speaker behind the right grill. That produces the sound which is adequately clear and loud. The left grill holds the primary mic. Volume is quite high but you won't feel any distortion if played at full volume. I am quite a music person and I enjoyed the audio quality through headphones as well. But when you hold the phone in landscape for gaming or watching movies or videos, it will be covered by your hands. Consequently, Sound output would be muffled. It is a dual SIM device that simultaneously supports two nano SIM cards with 4G LTE capability. The phone doesn't feature NFC, uh, which can be a bit disappointment for some users. For me, it wasn't a big deal as I sometimes use NFC to pair with portable speakers only and that can be done with the help of Bluetooth as well. Rest, it features standard Wi-Fi, Bluetooth 4.1, and USB Type-C cable for wired connectivity. Earlier, it was available to buy on an invite basis at Amazon.in, but now it's available to buy anytime. The 16GB with 3GB RAM variant is priced at 22,999 INR, whereas 64GB with 4GB variant comes for Rs 24,999 INR. Price is a true bargain at the specs and build quality it offers. OnePlus 2 nails it when it comes to camera, audio quality, fingerprint sensor, performance and stands up to the expectation while others somewhere remain a disappointment. Overall, the smartphone is great considering the price segment but doesn't validate the statement flagship killer. 
It could have been even acceptable if the company had not created unnecessary hype and set expectations impossibly high. What do you guys think about uh, OnePlus 2? Let me know in the comment section below. Don't forget to like and subscribe. See you in next one. Till then, have a great time.